faith does not remove Muslims or their imams from daily practical matters in family life, in business, in community affairs. Faith, rather, is a force that should deepen our concern for our worldly habitat, for embracing its challenges, and for improving the quality of human life. El Wise is a graduate from International Wise In Training Program under the IIS, the Institute of Smiley Studies. For the last 15 years, he has delivered wises, seminars, and sessions to various segments of the Jamaat, and he has served as al in ETREP for Edmonton, Prairies, and Pakistan. In professional life, al Shams works with one of the leading organizations in North America in a leadership role in sales and business development. So al we will now begin the presentation and I will join again in the second half of the webinar to, to facilitate and go through the audience questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hamid. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya Madad and Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. Today's webinar, we are going to cover the topic nurturing the Imam and Murid relationship. And before we begin the presentation, I would like you to look at the overview, which is going to explore the meaning and significance of Imam Murid relationship. And then we will touch upon the nurturing of our relationship with our Imam. So these will be the two areas that we will be covering in the next 30 to 40 minutes during a presentation. Before I start the session, I would like to share a small story with you people. It's about the story of Pir Sabzali and the Maulai's Jamaat. When Pir Sabzali visited Central Asia, he wrote his work in his book called Madhya Asia Ni Rasik Vigato, which is also some parts of it is also published in the anthology of Ismaili literature. And that journey is about the time of 1923. But first of all, the picture that you see on the slide is about an oil painting of Habu's village from Tajikistan in the year 1995 by an artist whose name is Amonbek Rakhmov, who has reproduced the mountainous regions surrounding this village in Tajik Badakhshan. And this actually tells us the kind of difficult terrain that Pir Sabzali would have had to cross during his journey through Central Asia. Coming back to the story, when Pir Sabzali met the Maulais, it's the Jamaat in the Reshun part of Badakhshan at that time, and now, right now, it is in Pakistan, in Chitral, in northern areas of Pakistan. The objective was to recite the Farman of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah to the Jamaat. Hundreds of men, women, and children had gathered, and they were sitting in great anticipation so that they could hear the farman of Maulana Hazar Imam, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah at that time. As soon as the reading commenced, all listened attentively with immense respect and decorum. After hearing the farman, their eyes brimmed with tears of joy. Pir Sabzali asked them, why you people are crying? And they said, our ancestors yearned longingly their entire lives to hear these very words of blessing, but never had that chance. 
Today, our Maula has sent those blessings straight to her threshold. Can there be any day more joyous than this? Here's an opportunity for us to reflect. How can a community stay connected with the Imam of, for almost a thousand years without seeing them physically or not even hearing their firman for generations? What kept this Jamaat bound, strong in their faith and in their love and devotion for the Imam despite the fear of oppressions from the Soviet regime? For practicing their faith openly. They did not have any physical contact with the Imam or institutional structures except the teachings of Pir Nasir Khusro for almost a thousand years. And probably they had all the reasons to say that why there couldn't be a better day than the day they heard the firman of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah. The big question here what is this relationship? What kind of relationship is this? The answer to that question is that it is the spiritual bond. The spiritual bond between the Imam of the time and the Murid. Another question, why do we call it a spiritual bond? The preamble of the constitution, of the Ismaili constitution, actually summarizes it so beautifully. And I would like to read that in front of you. The authority of the Imam in the Ismaili tariqah is testified by Baya, by the Murid to the Imam, which is the act of acceptance by the Murid of the permanent spiritual bond between the Imam and the Murid. This allegiance unites all Ismaili Muslims worldwide in their loyalty, devotion, and obedience to the Imam within the Islamic concept of universal brotherhood. You must have noticed I've put something in red here. And these three words is the crux of this session, permanent spiritual bond. And that is further explained so very well by Imam Muiz alayhi salam. And I read, indeed, even when you are physically away from us, our souls are together in our mutual love for each other. Closeness cannot just be in physical terms, but also needs to be in spirit. Your souls are close to us, even if our bodies and locations are apart. The closeness in Belaya is more precious than closeness in blood relationships. When Imam Shah Karim al -Husseini visited the Central Asian Jamaat. He addressed them from Moscow in 1995. And that's when the first time an Imam had actually visited the Central Asian Jamaat physically. And he referred to this closeness. He referred to this permanent spiritual bond to the Marines. Let's try to explore certain concepts related to this spiritual bond between us and our Imam. So as I said, it's permanent. This bond is permanent. And what do we mean when we say this bond is permanent? It is forever. It's, it gives us an opportunity to reflect that when Imam says, I'm with you always, I always think about you. He doesn't only 
mean to say that we are with him only in this world. This bond is permanent, which means we were, it was there before we came to this world. It is going to be after we leave this world as well. And that bond is our allegiance to the authority, to the imam of the time in this world, as in Ismaili Murid. And that is testified by Baya, as referenced in the Ismaili constitution preamble that we read. The third aspect is the mutual love, which is not one-sided, of course. It is two-sided. It is the love from the murid to the imam and the love of imam to the murid, which is beyond all other material relationships. As Imam Moiz said, the closeness of a relationship is way better, is much beyond than the closeness in blood relationships. So these were some concepts we needed to understand before we move on to this question. What does this bond mean to me as an Ismaili Murid? So before we try to explore an answer to this question, let's try to get into an exercise, a small little activity just for our own self. I would like everyone to close their eyes and, and just start thinking about your own self. While you're closing your eyes, I would encourage you to think about who are you? That is, who am I? And there are going to be some questions I'm going to ask. And let's try and answer those questions inner thinking of who am I? So let's start while you are closing your eyes right now. Question, who am I? Who am I? I'm Shams. But that's my name. Then who am I? I am a doctor, engineer, or lawyer, or teacher, or a businessman, or a student, but that's my occupation. Then who am I? Well, I'm father, or mother, a brother, or sister, or son, a daughter, a husband, a wife, but that's my relationship with someone. Then who am I? Okay. Let's pretend someone has taken away my hands. Am I still there? Yes, of course. Let's pretend someone has taken away my legs. Am I still there? Of course I'm still there. Take all my body parts away. Do I still exist? Take my emotions away. Do I still exist? Who am I then? Take my memory away. Do I still exist? Then who am I? Okay, take my thoughts away. Am I still there? Do I still exist? Who am I at that time? Is the answer yes? If yes, then who that I am is? We can open our eyes right now. That is the fundamental question that Islam poses 
especially our Ismaili Tariqa. And that's the question our Imam actually asks us. That's the question our peers, our Sayyids, our Dais have encouraged us to reflect constantly in our lives. That's the question that leads us to think, what is the nature of my being? Where have I come from? Where am I going to go after I pass away from this physical world? And this brilliant perspective by a French philosopher, how can we neglect that? It says, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, but are spiritual beings having a human experience. And when we say that, we see ourselves as a spiritual being who is in a journey, who is in a journey to go back to its origin. Because there must be some origin somewhere where we came from and we are on a journey. And we are on a journey back to that origin. And how beautifully Allah says in Quran Sharif, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Indeed, to Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. But the question is, who is going to hold my hands in my journey to go back to the origin? Who is going to guide me? Who is going to show me the path for me to be able to go back to my origin? Who is going to enhance my understanding of myself? my spiritual self, my soul, that I am a spiritual being who is going to help me navigate the problems in life and keep my faith strong in my spiritual being, in my journey. And that takes us to a very, very important concept of Imamat. The concept of Imamat, which is the crux of the spiritual bond between a murid and his murshid, that is the Imam of the time. Allah says in Quran, we have encompassed everything in the manifest Imam. Everything in the manifest Imam. Whatever you can think, imagine of the universe, everything in the manifest Imam. As per the Shia interpretation, the manifest Imam means the Zahir Imam, Imam Mubin, as it says. And as per the Shia interpretation, it is the Imam and Ismaili Tariqa, it is the Imam of the time. At another occasion, Allah says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَعْوِلُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَرَاسِخٌ فِي الْعِلْمِ None knows the book's interpretation except Allah and those firmly rooted in knowledge. Here is again, the idea is of rasikhun fil ilm, those who are firmly rooted in the knowledge, the knowledge which is the perfect knowledge, as per the Shia interpretation and specifically the Ismaili Tariqa. The Rasikhun fil ilm is the Imam of the time. So when we are in a journey towards going back to our origin, the support that we can count as Ismailis, as the Murids, is of the Imam to hold my hands 
and to take me through that journey. Another beautiful allegory that Allah uses in Quran is the rope of Allah. And he says, and hold fast, all of you together, to the rope of Allah, and do not separate. How this could be explained? This is actually the symbol of continuing guidance, the rope of Allah itself. And we see the continuing guidance in the form of Hazar Imam, the Imam of the time, which is manifested in the line of Imam, of course. And the role of the Imam is to illuminate the path of the movie to spiritual enlightenment and material well being. And that rope of Allah is what we are asked by Allah to hold it firm and do not get divided. The question is how do I nurture the spiritual thought? If we try to analyze our lives as a murid, we see we have two facets of our relationship. One is with the divine, which is the vertical line of this Deen Dunya framework that you can see on the slide, which is a human, that is myself, with my Allah. And the other line is, the horizontal line, which is my relationship with my fellow human beings, the environment, the rest of the world. As per the teachings of Islam, and especially when we are in this Mubarak month of Ramadan, we are reminded constantly about these two relationships, to keep a balance between these two relationships. One of them is a human to Allah, which is called Hukukullah, the rights of Allah. Hukuk is the plural for the word Haq in Arabic. The other one is called Hukukullibad, the rights of the people, of Allah's creation in general. So when we talk about the rights of Allah, which means what is my connection with my divine, with my God, with the nur of that Imam. And here is what we find. How do I nurture that connection? In other words, how do I nurture the spiritual bond? Through zikr, that is remembrance, through personal search. We just had this little exercise about who am I? How much am I thinking about my own self? How much am I thinking, where have I come from? Where am I going to go back? Especially in the time of crisis that we are in right now. And how much am I submitting myself to the divine? With an approach, with an attitude that I am nothing. You are everything. You're the creator. I'm just the creation. And the other half, which is the horizontal line, is about dedicating myself to the service of others. Making sure that I lead my life ethically. Making sure that I abide by the principles of Islam. Hazman keeps guiding us on this to live an ethical life. And when we talk about service, we have such a beautiful platform of voluntary service in our tariqa, which we call seva as well. But this whole deen and dunya framework is actually dependent on an underlying principle, on an underlying foundation of our tariqa. And that I would like to explain with an allegory used by Pir Shahabuddin Shah. He uses an example of a tree 
to explain ishq as the foundation of faith, which is iman. In other words, what he says in his book, the true meaning of religion, which actually in Farsi it's called Risala Dar Hakikate Deen, he explains, he gives an example of tree. And he says, see tree as your faith. It's everything from top to bottom. The leaves, the flowers, the fruits, the blossoming of this, of these leaves and the flowers and fruits during different seasons as they apply. The strength of this tree, the magnanimity of this tree. This whole tree is dependent on its roots. And the root is love. Ishq, he says. If love is not strong enough, the tree is going to shake. Any thunderstorm, any strong wind is probably enough for this tree to deteriorate or to just fall down or to just give up. As long as the roots are strong, he says, everything else is secondary and it will flourish because the roots are strong. He draws our attention to nurture the roots all the time, to make sure that they are strong every time, which is our love. Love for who? Love for Ben Murshid, love for the Imam. Love for, with that relationship, that spiritual bond that I have with my Imam. There was a time when um, Ansari Medina, they approached Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and they made a pledge to the Prophet requesting that, O oh, Prophet Muhammad, you have done so much for us, so much. You have dedicated your life for us. Quran has been revealed on you and you have taught us Quran. You have taught us Islam. What can we give you in return? At that very moment, this ayat reveals. And it says, say, I do not ask of you any reward for it, which is the conveying of revelation, except love for my relatives. Except love for my relatives. Al-Qurba, which is referred to as Ahl al -Bayat. The family of the Prophet. Our Imam is the direct descendant of the Prophet and Hazrat Ali alayhi salam. When he is the direct descendant of the Prophet, he is from the Al Al Bayt. He is from Al Qurba. And when Imam Jafar Sadiq assures us that when we love the Imam of the time, what we get in return. That is really, really beautiful to note. I would read this. Everyone who bears love to us will be with us on the day of the resurrection. He will be under our protection and be our companion in all stations in paradise. Doubly do I swear by God, God purifies the heart of everyone who loves us. Very important point. He will be under our protection and be our companion in all stations. Referring to that permanent bond. The permanent bond which is not only limited to this world itself. The permanent bond which is beyond this world. And this is what 
is evident in Imam Jafar Sadiq's line. He will be under our protection and will be a companion in all stations. If we try to go back to the Maulais, the Jamaat, they had that permanent bond as well, as we discussed. They were able to nurture their bond with love, with that vertical and the horizontal that we discussed. And when you nurture that bond with our Imam, you, you are in a, in a different mindset, in a mindset that feels you so comfortable. It makes us feel that we are always, always protected by that love. No matter what happens to us, but we are protected by that love. He's always with me. That nur of imamat is always with me. And that takes us to this important concept in Bismillah Rahman Rahim. That we say, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, which means the most kind and giving and compassionate. And Ar Rahim means the most merciful. The root word of these two words is in a single word, which is called Raham. And when we try to explore that word, what is the meaning in Arabic for this word? So one of the, one of the most striking meanings of this word is, in Arabic, is womb, mother's womb. How fascinating concept this is. That when my, my Imam loves me, the Noor, the Divine, when he's loving me, he's loving me as if I am in the mother's womb because this is what our Rahman, our Rahim is rooted into. One of the attributes of Allah. I feel I am always in a mother's womb. Imagine a fetus. What could be the safest place for the fetus than a mother's womb? To be protected all the time. So that's the mindset, that's the perspective we can draw as a strength from this relationship with our Imam. I'd like to draw your attention to this beautiful um, example of an oyster, actually. We might possibly know that an oyster, whenever it creates a pearl, it's because of a certain process that that oyster goes through, and it's a very painful process, actually. So what I learned about it was, that an external small particle, just a very tiny particle, enters into the oyster. An oyster just cannot stand it. The reason is because it disturbs its entire mechanism. The oyster has two choices. Whether it gives up and die because of that total disruption, and destruction within himself, or it starts converting this problem, this adversity, into an opportunity. What it does is that with its fluid, it starts getting into a process of converting that tiny particle into a precious pearl. And when all we see is the end result, is the pearl, but we don't see the process behind it. But that's what the process oyster goes through. We are right in the middle of the crisis right now. It's a global recession, it's a pandemic. 
It's an opportunity for us while we are thinking of nurturing that bond with our Imam. It's an opportunity of, for us to draw strength from our love from, for our Imam, from our faith for our Imam, and convert those irritants, convert those discomfort times into opportunity. Work hard with the belief, with the faith that my Imam is always with me. Because he says that he's always with us. And when I do that, I'm in the process of nurturing my relationship with my Imam. A quick allegory or analogy, so to say, of a shock absorber. When we drive cars, we see a lot of potholes around in the cities and the bumpiness, bumpiness on the roads. What helps us the most at that time? To make sure that we don't break our backs and we don't get those jerks all the time. It's a shock absorber. When we try to practice a faith, when we try to nurture our love for our Imam, and we have that perspective always within us, that we are protected, that acts, one of the ways that faith acts, in our lives is as a shock absorber. A shock absorber that protects us from breaking our back from those sudden jerks, from those potholes, from the bumpiness in the road. Those potholes, those bumps are never gonna end. The problems are never gonna vanish. They might even increase in number. But what keeps us strong? And when we are strong through that faith, we don't see those problems hurting us that much. They may hurt. We do get sad. We do get worried. But it also gives us an opportunity to move on like that oyster. It gives us the strength to convert the adversity into opportunity. As our, our older, our elders actually tell us, the divine makes you think to adapt well, to be creative in your approach. And when that happens, it is so beautifully said by Allah Ta'ala. He's quoted by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. And that is called Hadith Qudsi. And he quotes Allah. Prophet says, quoting Allah, My servant continues to draw near to me with voluntary acts so that I shall love him. When I love him, I'm his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hand with which he holds, and his foot with which he walks. Then I don't have to do anything. That's the mindset. When I am nurturing that love, when I'm nurturing that bond, that permanent spiritual bond in this world, in my life with my Imam, this is what I get out of it. The sense of comfort in my life. And then I, I, I flourish, I adapt, I become creative in my approach. And then I become successful just as that oyster producing a pearl. Thank you very much.